So I'm the kind of person that doesn't actually like tripods. And I've talked about it before, but this is the Peak Design carbon fiber tripod. It's $650. Unfortunately, my previous one I left in a rental car in Iceland and they just they just never gave it back to me. And oddly enough, at the same time, I was getting emails from uh, Ulanzi asking if I wanted to do a review on their carbon fiber tripod. At the time, I owned this tripod. I'm not really a tripod guy, and so I was like, nah, I'm not really interested in making a tripod review. But then, I left the tripod in the rental car and had an actual decision to make. Do I buy this same tripod again, or do I buy the Ulanzi Zero F38 thing at almost half the price? Full disclosure and conclusion, I guess, I did repurchase the Peak Design one, mostly just out of convenience and pure frustration that I had lost this one. But I did reach back out to Yolanzi and say, hey, I found myself in this predicament. I needed a tripod immediately, and so I didn't want to like talk to them and figure out if I was gonna get one, yada, yada, yada. So I purchased this one just knowing that I had more gigs coming up and needed one just as soon as possible. But since I was in that actual predicament of not having a tripod, I said, yeah, sure, send it over, I'll do a comparison. They did send me this for free, but for what it's worth, I did purchase this tripod twice. So at least that's kind of like where I'm at in this particular video. Now the whole purpose for me in having a tripod like this is the fact that it can be very, very small and compact. And obviously both of these are the carbon fiber ones, which I believe is like 30% or so lighter than the aluminum ones. When I first thought about getting one of these tripods, I was filming my moment lesson with Dewey and Carnes, and so I was able to hold them side by side and go, okay, I get that it's almost double the price, but I'm going after something that I actually am going to pick up and I'm going to bring with me. And every little bit about saving weight and all that kind of stuff can make a big difference for me at least. So I decided, hey, I'm just gonna spend the money. And honestly, it's been one of those things that I've taken everywhere. I've taken on every plane flight to every wedding and it really hasn't been an issue. And I've found a ton of times that it's been incredibly useful and pretty much at every single wedding, I end up using it. Most recently, right before I left it in my rental car in Iceland, some of my favorite photos ever of this wedding venue with the Northern Lights was clearly just possible because I had this tripod on me. And if it was a larger tripod, I would not have brought it with me. There's just no way I'm gonna lug around the other tripods I've had. Even the one that I have in the background and I used for my video on like Kodak Ektachrome, the first basically video on this channel, you don't wanna travel with it. But this is a travel tripod. It's very small and so obviously it gained a great following. Now, because of that great following, I'm assuming, other companies like Yulanzi here decided that they were going to jump in that same kind of market and go after that same type of demographic. Now, we have some clear differences and this isn't exactly one of those like, oh my gosh, this company copied this company, yada, yada, yada. There are a lot of like definite differences here. On the Yulanzi here, we have like a, a circular type of tripod leg where here on the Peak Design, we have a very angular type of thing that when it becomes folded up, it gets to be a little bit more, I don't know, uniform in a way. Um, and they, they try to just make everything kind of like fold in together and look cohesive maybe, I guess, would be like the, the word to use here. And then on the Ulanzi here, we have, you know, circular ones. And so when it folds up, it's fine. It just, it doesn't have that like more sleek kind of look that the Peak Design has. They both have the same amount of extension for the most part. I believe the Ulanzi is like a couple centimeters taller at its max height, but it does have a sort of interesting thing where we have like this one and this one are the only two. And for what it's worth, I never really changed this to the other one, but apparently this little spot right here is one of the weak points of this tripod. But with the uh, Ulanzi one here, you have that spot, you have this spot, and then you have this one. So you get an extra kind of like low angle version if you want, uh, which like doesn't really pertain to me necessarily, but 
it is a feature. Now, both of them have these, you know, center columns that can be removed, and then you can take the thing out and kind of flip things around. And both of them actually have a way to get this little section out here to do so. On the bottom, you have this little phone holder thing, which I have never used, but it exists. And so if that is something that you're into, rock and roll, it has that. And then the tool that it uses to do all of its things is this little guy right here. For me, just storing it on this little spot hasn't been an issue. I've never lost it. On the Ulanzi here, that's where that tool is located. So instead of pulling out like a little phone mount, you pull out this and then you have your tool right here. I would be much less likely to lose that tool. I personally haven't had an issue losing this, but I can see how someone could take it off, put it in their pocket or something and then, and then lose it. The bigger issue is gonna come down to the ball head and whether or not you like that. First off, we have a little knob here that pulls out and it allows you to raise and lower our little center column here. The compactness of the Peak Design is somewhat smaller. Now we are at the same height as the Ulanzi Komen thing. I guess if you're going for ultimate compactness, this is gonna be a little bit smaller. The ball head on here, you twist, and then you're able to go kind of around, you see all that kind of stuff. And then you have these multiple little things that go around the ball head, which allows you then to turn the camera one way or the other then you have to kind of find the spots where it fits or go a little bit higher to get to a spot where you're gonna be able to do that. If you want to photograph something vertically the other way, it's not gonna work because of this whole section right here in these three pieces. So if you're gonna do some vertical stuff, you gotta go this way. And then one of the things that's going on here is this is my Leica M10 with a base plate on it. So I'm not using one of the Peak Design ones. And the issue that I found, at least with this one, is that it will go on here, but the lock won't lock. So a little sketchy. So something that I wouldn't carry the camera around on this with, but some other cameras and systems, like this is the X-E4 with the actual Fujifilm base plate. That one totally locks. So it's just more of like a custom sizing thing. B&H is calling for a thing for a future video. Yo. Hey, what's up, man? Ah, uh, good. Oh, sorry. So if you get like a Arca plate, this particular one is slightly different because many other ones are this type where it comes out. And so even if the, the fit isn't right, you can kind of like still bring it in and out and give yourself some tightness there. Obviously, if you're using the actual Peak Design plate, it's going to lock in perfectly. Now, we're a little bit different on this uh, Ulanzi thing here. So to lift up instead of the knob, which we have here, we have this little lever. That's what allows you to raise and lower our center column here. And then to do it instead of turning, you have to kind of push in and just kind of hope that it's in there. And then we have a similar little lever here to sort of release the top portion to allow you to get this whole thing going on. And then instead of having the three little sections here, you have kind of like a typical ball head thing where just have like one or two spots. Um, what's interesting about this little setup here is we have like a little pan head. You can lock this thing in and then pan back and forth. Overall, like the quickness of being able to switch those up are pretty similar and I don't see a huge advantage either way. What is the biggest contributing factor that I had, I just, I've watched videos on this thing and obviously this guy before. I don't see people talking about this and this is what like kind of frustrates me. So this is the part of the video where I sort of go over the Ulanzi F38 quick release system. So I'd always wondered why there were two different versions on the Ulanzi website. I honestly couldn't figure it out. So I do want to set the record straight that if you want to go with the super quick release system, you can get the F38 one. But if you are someone like me that loves the Arca style, the regular Zero Y one has the Arca plate ball head. So no need to do all the other things I talk about here. But if you did want to get the F38 system for that quick release stuff, like we'll talk about in a second, it is still compatible 
with Arca, but not vice versa. So wanted to, I guess, set the record straight on here and give a quick little pros and cons before we jump into this part. You have your little Arca type ball head, right? This is the Fujifilm actual hand grip thing here. This is an F38 compatible whatever thing. This doesn't have the little plate and locking thing here. So even if I took out all of the different things, this is not gonna fit here. It's not gonna go in. This X100V right here has the actual Ulanzi Falcam F38 plate on it, and it works here. The Peak Design thing, little tripod plate, will not go in there. This one from Moment, here it is, will not go in there. This other little Arca thing from Ulanzi, will not go in there. So if you are purchasing this system, you are going to be married to using this plate on your cameras, which you might not care about, but I personally don't like when my cameras don't sit flush. So I don't like having these little plates on here. I much, much, much prefer having just a regular base plate. This is the you know small rig for the a7 IV. Totally goes on here. I didn't even need to slide it in there. All you gotta do is do this. It locks, no problem. But if we wanted to stick it on here, not gonna fit. So again, you can use anything you want on this because it's regular Arca and it has a movable little piece here to allow you to stick other things on. This on the other hand, you are stuck and nothing else will fit except for their F38 system, which again is a cool little system. They make their own little capture clip things. And what's confusing about this is that it'll say that this is Arca compatible, which it is. This is Arca compatible. So I can take this and stick it on an Arca plate. Like I can stick this on here, that works. But this is the only thing that will fit onto this system. And it's a great little setup, that's not moving. So if you are like a person that has like just one or two cameras, which I guess most people probably are, and you're okay with tossing a couple of those little plates on the bottom of your camera, this can be a great setup and is a really, really inexpensive kit versus the Peak Design. Now, all that to say, this is currently, yeah, like 350 bucks, 370 bucks, sub $400. And right now, if you buy one of these, it also comes with a separate center column and you can order it with a little fluid head for 25 bucks. So for under 400 bucks, now just regular compatible Arca plate. So I now get the pan, the tilt, but I don't get the side to side of a ball head. So I'm when using this, then you have to then make sure that you're leveling your tripod legs, which is kind of annoying. Since this comes with the pull, no matter what, that allows you to do whatever you want, you can get something like this little mini, mini, mini ball head. Then you can just toss this on the top if you wanted something that would be compatible with everything and you weren't someone that wanted to be stuck with those plates. Again, you have a little bit more kind of like headroom up there and your base is pretty darn small. Obviously you can put together whatever type of Arca plate you want. You can do a lot of things with this and I love that it comes with both center columns. I can keep like the regular ball head and use it with one of their proprietary little plate things. I could also just use it like this if I wanted to or when I'm going out to film some youtube kind of stuff, I'll toss this little guy on there and then I'm able to use it as like a really, really small little fluid head. It's definitely not the best fluid head I've ever used and I haven't even used very many. The tolerance isn't, isn't very good in my opinion, but it's you're paying 25 bucks for it. You're not gonna get like, some crazy Manfrotto quality out of it. Is it worthwhile to use and has it been great to use? Absolutely. I am in the nice position that I have both, right? So I have the Peak Design and I have this, and I'm definitely going to keep both. 
I've been making the Ulanzi one just into my video rig. And then I still have been taking the Peak Design around when I'm going to do weddings and, and all that kind of stuff. As much as I'm disappointed in this, and I am, I really wish that they would make the same ball head that was just compatible with just regular Arca stuff. It's pretty annoying to me that it's not. Either way, it's a really cool concept and the flexibility that you gain out of here at a much lower price point is pretty fantastic. You can definitely buy other, you know, mounts and things for this, but the price is just significantly higher. So yeah. So again, if you are totally fine with having these plates on your camera, I think the Yuanzi is like the clear choice here. If you like the setup to be as small as humanly possible, if you just like the peak design thing, if you want good resale value, I feel like they are really, really good at that. Go with the peak design one because ultimately they're very similar. I don't think you're gonna go wrong with either one of them. Would I spend the money again if I lost this? Probably not. I would probably be more than content with the Yulanzi here, which I guess is probably the best recommendation I could give. Do I like the Peak Design quite a bit? I'm gonna stick with yes on that. Do I think it's overpriced? Yeah, yeah kinda. And do I get most of the same stuff out of this guy? Yeah, but I will say that my experience with this and just knowing that I've used it in every environment ever and it's treated me well along the way. It does go a long ways for future reliability, all that kind of stuff. Um, but again, could not recommend this thing enough at the same time. Uh, I believe there's a discount code in the description if you wanna pick one of these up. Obviously, I'll put the links to the Peak Design one as well. If you have any questions about any of this kind of stuff, leave a comment below, subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you all on the next one.